Hello, welcome to your 10th lab for Physics 185. This lab is going to take a virtual planet and show you how you can find information about the motion of your planet, the motion of another planet in your solar system. We have a couple of assumptions with this lab. That is, your planet and the other planet are the only two objects that we're going to worry about, and that the orbits of the planets are circular in shape. We'll go ahead and we'll use Kepler's third law, the fact that the period squared <coughs> is equal to a constant times the radius cubed for all of the planets in the solar system, acting under the, or moving under the influence of a single gravitational um, large massive body like the Sun. Um, let's look at what this lab looks like. If you open up the planetary motion lab, what you will see is you will see a view of the sky. The yellow object is your sun, and you should see a fairly bright round object that represents the motion of a planet. If you don't see that object in the sky, you may want to switch to the other view. So right now I'm looking at the sun at sunset. If I switch to the view of the sun at sunrise, <coughs> I see that right here I have a bright white object which represents the motion of, of our planet. What you are going to do in this lab, then, is you are going to try to find the um, period of your planet's orbit around the sun. You will try to find the size, the radius, of the other planet's orbit in terms of, of your radius. So this is using the astronomical unit, right? We define the size of the solar system based on the distance from the Earth to the sun. And one of the advantages of picking a heliocentric model for the solar system is that using simple geometry, we could actually determine the relative distances of all of the planets from the sun. So let's go ahead and look at what happens to this particular view of the sky as I begin to step through this particular motion. Notice as I begin to move, the sun will move horizontally across this field of view. If you think about what happens to the sun over the course of the year here on Earth, you notice that the sun in the summer will rise in the northeast and in the winter actually rises in the southeast. And so we can actually use this changing position of the rising um, point of the sun to help determine the length of the year. And so what you can do is you can locate I'll go ahead and I'll move the sun. It's moving farther and farther south. I'll start moving in smaller intervals. And you notice here on about day 400, it begins to reverse its motion. And so if I click through this multiple times and begin to come back to this particular point, moving very slowly, at the point where the sun begins to reverse its motion, would correspond to a full year. So it looks like for this particular planet, the length of the year is about 250 days. So that's step one. You'd repeat this to find the length of the year on your planet. Now to figure out the size of the solar system, what you need to do is you need to find the maximum elongation of the planet. And if you remember what the elongation of a planet represents, is it just represents the angular measurement from the sun to the location of the planet in the sky. As we move over the course of the year, you can notice that the position of that planet changes so that it's closer to the sun, farther away from the sun. And so to measure that elongation, you just simply click on the sun and drag. And notice that this cursor now is telling me the maximum elong or the elongation at this particular point. So what I need to do is measure the elongation of this planet over the span of many, many days to figure out what the maximum value is. For example, on this day, the elongation is only 12 degrees. You can use the spreadsheet that's located in digital measures or in um, D2L to help you measure that particular elongation. And so you probably want to take these measurements about every 20 days, and that should give you a reasonable value. If you're at the maximum elongation, for example, you're at 24, 
and then it stays at 24. Maybe you want to change your steps to, to go by one day to see if maybe in between day 240 and day 260, maybe it actually got a little bit farther out, and by taking those big jumps, you're actually missing some of that information. Once you have the maximum elongation, it's very simple to find the radius of that planet's orbit in terms of the size of your orbit. It's just very simply, the radius of the planet's orbit is just equal to the sine of the maximum elongation. Triangle is just simply a right triangle. The hypotenuse of that triangle is the radius of your orbit. We've just set that to 1 on this particular scale. And so there's a hidden 1 in here. If you take the sine of the maximum elongation, the value of that will just simply give you the radius of that planet's orbit in values of your planet's radius. The last thing that you can do then for this particular lab is to find the actual period of this planet's orbit using Kepler's third law. And so remember that t squared is proportional to r cubed. And so if we want to find the period of this planet's orbit, we take the period of this planet is just equal to the period of your planet times the square root of your planet's, um, sorry, the radius of that planet cubed divided by the radius of your planet cubed. I will just make a note right now, there's a glitch in this particular software program, and so while you will be able to get um, the maximum elongation to check and likely the radius of your planet's orbit and the radius of the other planet, um, it is very unlikely that you will get the period of the other planet to check. Let me just explain what I mean when I go to the check your answers box. The length of the Earth here was determined by watching the sun move from north to south over the course of a year in terms of its sunrise or sunset. The length of the Venus here, this would be the, the value that you would get from the equation. Um, the period is equal to r period times the square root of the ratio of those radii cubed. This one will not check. The radius of the orbit of Venus would just be simply the sine of that maximum elongation and the maximum elongation here is just put in, in degrees. So in your check answer um, report that you attach to your spreadsheet, I would expect to see checks for this box, this box, and this box. I would not expect to see a check for this box. There's just a glitch in the software program. If you have any questions, please email me. Um, good luck on this lab.